Can we please talk about UFC Vegas 36 coming our way on Saturday evening? Don't forget, this one is one for the UK fans. It's actually going to be on at uh, UK time. I think the prelims start at 7, main card starts at 9. Um, so, if you're new to the show, welcome. If you're returning... Welcome back. Basically, this is the Burt Locker Fights in 15. I will have a look at the card and there's a few uh, bits and pieces where I think there's an underdog that has a chance of coming in. And what I like to do is slam down some absolutely terrible bets. I do not recommend following the bets because I have yet one accumulator. To, one accumulator was only one out though, to be fair. But in any event, it's just to add a little bit of flavour, a little bit of fun. I'll do a little bit of a breakdown for the fights. There, so there may be some fights that are flying under the radar. It might give you a little bit of insight into who's fighting and what their background is. And uh, I'll try and wrap that up in about 15 minutes or less. Hence, it's called the Burt Locker Fights in 15. So, let's start off with the middleweight division. Now, we've got Dalcha Lungiambula versus Mark andre Barriult. Now... I'm going to call uh, uh, Lungiambula Dalcha for the purposes of this breakdown because it is uh, far easier. Basically, this guy, he's, he's someone I've, ha I've had my eye on for, an, for a while, to be fair, because he was a long-time champ in South Africa, double champ, actually, uh, light, weight, light heavyweight and heavyweight. And he had a decent debut, uh, light heavyweight, against Daquan Townsend, and then he got derailed somewhat by uh, Mahamed Ankalaev, but we all know who... Now, we all know how good... And Kalaev is. So there is no shame in that one, really. If you haven't seen that, it's, it was a wicked front kick and then punches. So uh, if you've got Fight Pass, go back and give that a little watch. It is, it is, it is a pretty good one. Uh, then he made his debut at middleweight versus Marcus Perez. It wasn't the best fight in the world, but Doucher did get the decision. Now, considering that cardio has always been an issue for the big man, it was interesting that he managed to come out top of a three-round decision. Maybe it speaks to him managing his gas tank a little better because man the guy's a monster i don't know how he even makes middleweight the guy is just muscle on top of muscle he is an absolute uh, specimen really is and uh Barriel, he had a rough start to his ufc career with three straight losses and then a win overturned because of a doping violation and he has now come back in 2021 in march i believe and he did get the tko over his opponent abu azatir i think it was so for me I like Dalcha in this one because he is coming in as, a, as an underdog. And I think he does have a slight reach advantage in this one. And he is just an impressive, explosive fighter. Like, it's, he, he really is. He's When he's on form, he's really spectacular to watch. So, for that reason, as he's coming in as an underdog, uh, I am going to go... I would go for a decision here. Uh, because, as we saw, he manages his gas tank slightly better. And I would note that Barriot has never been finished. So it could speak to this going for a three-round decision. Now, the three-round decision in favour of uh, Dalcha is plus four, which is three to one in English. Now, I want to cover off the knockout there as well, because like I said, Dalcha is explosive as hell. and uh, he can, he can more than, He's more than capable of knocking anybody's head off. So I'm going to go with the double chance here, because he's getting better than even money, which is, so the knockout, TKO, or decision, 2.50 or 1.1 and a half, three to, three to whatever you want to call it is uh, a terrible bet anyway so uh, that's what i'm going for uh, double chance ko tko decision in favor of delcha then we have got the debut long awaited debut of one mr paddy pimlet and he is going to be taking on luigi vandramini at 155 pounds now i thought that there would be more on the UFC website about Paddy. For shame. This guy has been on the radar for quite some time. I know he's been been in Cage Warriors, which, which is a feeder promotion, really. But, I mean, the dude, he has been spoken about quite a lot. And especially in the UK. Like, everyone everyone who watches mixed martial arts avidly in the UK knows who the fuck Paddy Pimlet is, right? So the fact on the website they haven't even got a picture of him and his reach is zero and his leg reach is zero, it's kind of like... Come on, guys. What are you doing? This guy, because Paddy Pimlet has the kind of personality to really do some good things in the UFC. And I feel like they've, you know, they could have gotten on there a little bit earlier. Like, not having a, a profile picture for... Paddy Pimlet just seems a little bit odd. Anyway, Paddy is extremely good. He is extremely good. He used to struggle with his striking, but his striking has gotten better. Uh, but, you know, his grappling used to more than make up for his striking. He, he, he does like to grapple. He's very, very good at it as well. He got to black belt. So... 
Paddy, he's not going to be standing up for the most part, I don't think, in this fight. Although he will have a slight reach advantage, even though they haven't got the, the, the reach on there. But he is the taller man. And just judging from his frame, he's quite a long, lanky kind of fighter. He should, in theory, have the reach, I would have thought. Now, at the end of the day, uh, in the UFC, like Luigi, he's pretty handy. Like, look, like, he's... He hasn't been great in the UFC. He's lost two out of three, and his win was a pretty nice head kick, though. So Paddy's going to have to be careful of that. And Paddy, is, like I said, he's the taller man. But, like I said, looking at it, I, I think that the the edge in striking may well go to Vandramini, which poses a problem because Vandramini is also a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt in his own right. So it's kind of a question, will, he ha will Paddy have the grappling advantage? I, we don't actually know that for sure. So this is actually a pretty tough matchup that they've given Paddy for his debut, in my opinion. Now, I am pretty torn on this one, right? Because obviously my heart goes with Paddy. That's without question. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very patriotic in that regard. He is an English fighter. He's someone that I've been watching in Cage Warriors for some time. And I just think he's a great character. I think I'm hoping that he does well because he could really bring some fire, some, some personality to the UFC and, you know, represent the country. I just think it would be fun. Which is why I'm regretfully betting on his opponent. Because, now the only reason I'm doing this is because Paddy is the heavy favourite. But on paper, this one is closer than that, right? You're getting value on there just because everybody is betting on Paddy Pimlet because of the hype that's going along with him, right? So at least this way, you know, if my bet comes off, you know, I've got a bit of money, but hopefully Paddy will win and I'll be happier with that if I'm totally honest. Now, I'm by no means saying that Paddy isn't going to win this one. He's more than capable. What I'm saying is the betting lines have skewed it. So you're getting some value on his opponent there. And you've got to take that value because looking at it, the knockout submission double chance for Luigi is 3.25. That's like 2.25 to 1. So... I don't think he outpoints Paddy Pimler over three rounds. Paddy's kind of, in, in my head, he's going to be longer and he's going to be able to kind of, you know, at least outstrike him in that regard. But I, I just, and, and Luigi is a finisher. He's a dangerous finisher. He has finished all nine of his wins in, in MMA, right? So, yeah, I'm taking the knockout TKO submission double chance uh, for Luigi, which is 3.25. And uh, yeah, terrible bet. I'm betting on Luigi Van Dramani and my heart is very much going with Paddy Pimlet and that's all I'm going to say on that one. I'm really excited for that fight though. Make sure you tune in to that one. Then we have got Mustestas Bakalskas versus Khalil Roundtree. And now this one is my pick of the week. And also I would like to just point out that it's like I take the uh, the odds there, like the, the odds on the pictures, I, t I, I just cut them straight out of the Skybet uh, logo because it's just easier. But Skybet have uh, spelled Roundtree tree wrong on this when it's round tree not round tree it's khalil round tree come on sky bet be better come on so anyway where is the round tree that beat the guitar out of eric anders like i think it was like 2019 he looked fantastic in that fight but since then you know he got he's, he looked half asleep in his last fight and he got knocked out by kuta labor but kuta labor is you know he's a very powerful fighter so there's no shame in that and put it and put it and put He's really good himself, so there's no shame in dropping to a decision there. But two losses in a row, is Khalil's back in... Uh, is he backed into a corner? I mean, Bukowskis is in the same position. He's also coming off two losses. Now, Bukowskis is a very, very good kickboxer, but I feel like that could play into what Khalil Roundtree likes to do. Khalil Roundtree is also a very good kickboxer. We saw that against Eric Anders, and obviously he knocked out Gokan Saki as well. And I would say that overall... Uh, you know, Khalil Roundtree has fought the better competition out of the two fighters. I really think that. So Bukowskis is a heavy favourite here, but I think, honestly, I think UFC experience is key in this one. Bukowskis has three fights in the UFC and one win, whereas Khalil Roundtree has 10 fights in the UFC, only four wins, but that is three more wins against UFC level competition than Bukowskis has had. Now, I really like Bukowskis. He's very, very flashy, you know, very crisp kickboxer, but Khalil Roundtree is capable of decimating people, especially with leg kicks, and he does have a reach advantage with the, with the legs. His leg reach is longer than Bukowskis, so if he can get back to those leg kicks, 
I think he can take this one. And he is coming in as an underdog, 2.20, just better than evens for the win. Now, I'm taking that because it was only plus three on the, on the knockout, which is not good enough value for me. So I'm taking Khalil Roundtree for the win outright. And I think that is my pick of the week because, you know, I, I feel like on paper, uh, actually, stylistically, this one could favor him. But you know what? Anything can happen. And I've been wrong plenty. So, yeah, we're, I'm looking forward to that, though. It's good to see both of them back. Then we have got Tom Aspinall against Sergei Spivak. That's Spivak with a C, not a K. Come on, Skybet. Be better. In my notes, I spelt come on with a K just for, just for effect. Because... Yeah, terrible, terrible. Come on, man. But yeah, uh, Big Tom is back now. Big Tom Aspinall is legit. He's one of the best heavyweight prospects uh, that the UK have had in the heavyweight division uh, since kind of Ian Freeman, I guess. I mean, it's uh, I call him Big Tom for a reason. He is six foot five, and he is every bit a heavyweight. He is on a tear as well. Three UFC fights, three wins, three finishes. The last time out, he choked out Andre Arlovsky. So most people get a decision over Andre Arlovsky. He managed to finish him, which. Was fantastic now Sergey Spivak is no slouch himself uh, you know he's been in the UFC for a while now six fights four wins two losses he is very good arguably as good as anybody that Aspinall has faced up to this point now usually this is where I bet against Aspinall because he's such a heavy favorite and I'm a huge fan of his so I kind of I, I do sometimes make a habit of betting against the people that I like because that way if they win I'm happy and if they lose I've got a bit of money to kind of ease my pain you know but I don't see this going any other way than a finish for Aspinall. Aspinall is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and he can grab submissions. The plus six on the submission is very tempting, but I want to be on the safe side here for my accumulator because I don't want to go for that submission and have it be a knockout and that's the only thing that kind of puts my, my accumulator away. So I'm going for the double chance, knockout TKO, slash submission, 1.62. Terrible odds, really terrible odds, but it's pretty likely to happen. So I'm more than happy to bang that on my bet slip. And then we've got the main event, the main event of the evening, Darren Till versus Derek Brunson. It's been a while since we've seen Darren Till. It's always fun to see him in the octagon, but I'm just going to say it. As much as it pains me, I do not like this matchup for Till. I really don't. At the end of the day, look, he was killing himself going down to welterweight, but come on, let's not sugarcoat this. Who has Till looked really good against, really dominant against in the UFC. What, Cowboy Cerrone? Outside of that and his debut against Wendell de Oliveira, I know what you, I know who the fuck is that. Yeah, I don't know either, right? But since then, it's been a very close decision with Thompson, a, a loss to Woodley, loss to Masvidal, split decision at middleweight versus Gastelum. Uh, really close, but he did get the win, so fair play, but it was razor close. And then a unanimous decision loss to, to Rob Whittaker. Now, look, that he's got to start getting some wins. Come on, man. Now, strength of schedule does have to be considered here. It does, because since the move to middleweight, he's fought Kelvin Gastelum and Robert Whittaker, both of which I rate above Brunson. Here's the rub, though. Look, while Till was able to knock out people at welterweight, it was because he was huge at welterweight. At middleweight, he's not... He hasn't got that size advantage. He just doesn't have it. And we haven't seen that knockout power at middleweight as well. It, it, the power just doesn't seem to have transferred. Until I, until I start seeing that, I can't say that it's still there. I'll tell you who does have power, though, at middleweight. Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson has one shot knockout power at middleweight. We've seen it. Brunson's taller. He's thicker. He has a reach. And he's got the power. I would say that Darren Till is likely quicker. Maybe he's the better technical striker. His footwork might be a little bit better. He might be able to be a little bit more elusive. But he's going to have to be elusive because he's going to have to avoid those shots from Brunson like his life depends on it. Well, his career might, you know? Because it start getting more losses and, and all of a sudden... Yeah, but he's the thing is, Till's very marketable, so I don't think his job's anywhere near on the line. But he needs to start getting wins if he wants to start challenging for the title. And look, I hope I am wrong here because I'm a huge Darren Till fan, massive Darren Till fan. But I cannot bet on him as a favourite in this fight because honestly, I'm not convinced that he should be. The Brunson knockout, you know, it's just I, I like it. At the end of the day. 
Uh, what the way I could see this going, uh, Darren Till has got to make sure he doesn't get backed up against the fence. If he gets backed up against the fence, I think he's going to get knocked out. The problem is the fact that Brunson can wrestle and he can at least threaten with the wrestling. I can kind of see the fight going that going that way. It's in the smaller octagon as well. So, do you know what I mean? There's going to be less room for Darren Till to move around. That favours the power puncher in Derek Brunson. So that's what I'm going for. Derek Brunson by knockout is plus four. That's three to one in English. And you know what? I, I'm putting that on my bet slip, hoping that I'm wrong. I really do hope that I'm wrong. I hope that we see Darren Till return to kind of the form that we kind of know that he is a talented guy and that he can. He, 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 I'm hoping that he can get the win. So yeah, my, my money is going on Brunson by knockout because honestly, I could see that happening. But I am hoping against hope that Darren Till can find a way to beat Brunson. But either way, it's good. No, the, the jeopardy is killing me. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to make it exciting to watch. And so you've got the fivefold on that one. It's all the bets that I put on just there. So you've got... Uh, uh, Doucher by double chance, knockout or decision. And you have got uh, Luigi Vandramini to, as the double chance, knockout or submission. And you've got Khalil Roundtree just to win. You've got Tom Aspinall for the knockout submission. And then, of course, you've got Derek Brunson for the straight knockout. That is 115.50. So 114.521. That is a terrible bet. That is absolutely awful. And you know what? I really hope some of those legs on that bet are awful because there's a few British fighters that I have picked against which I, you know, which I am going to be cheering on, make no mistake. But it's going to be a really fun night. Remember, UK fans, that it's going to be on at a normal time. So 7 o'clock prelims, 9 o'clock main card, I believe. But either way, check your local listings. But it is going to be on in the evening at a reasonable time. I'll be doing a wrap-up of all these bets either Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So until then, keep those odds long and those bets. Terrible.